Hey guys, what's up? I wanted to, uh, I wanted to come on here. Um, sometimes, sometimes you ever feel like you have to blame yourself if something happens because you had information that you didn't share and then something bad happens. Um, I just did a post, um, I shared a YouTube news article, news clipping, whatever you wanna call it, um, just a few minutes ago actually. And then I started to just post it and move on to the next thing. But then I thought, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that because the time between when I knew there was this issue and the time that I had the opportunity to share the message and then I went and did dishes or made lunch or whatever it was I was about to go do, throw the clothes in the dryer, um, somebody else could die in that amount of time because this information is that important. Um, so as you guys are coming in, Mello, what's up, baby? I see you. Um, this information is that important. Like, it, this is that serious. I'm so frustrated right now. And it, who's, I'm feeling some kind of way because I just came out of this amazing three-day training where I was surrounded by entrepreneurs and positive energy and positive vibes and great messages and ins inspiring people. And, and then I log out of the training and the first thing I look at is a story about a gentleman who's getting sentenced, um, was just convicted for a, a domestic homicide that he committed three years ago where he killed his girlfriend and his and 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 her son her 10 year old son um and so for those of you who know me marcy batiste i'm the founder and executive director for nine seconds we are a progressive domestic violence organization where we're committed to providing the resources the training the tools the stuff that you need to prevent domestic violence so i felt like Yes, I posted the video and yes, I stated what the problem was with the video, but I'm not, I didn't share this. And so because I'm sad, mad, I, because I'm sad, like I'm hurt. I told y'all sometimes this stuff gets super personal for me. This, for whatever reason, just happened to be one of those times where it just got super, 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 super personal because it didn't have to happen. The article that I shared on YouTube, the video that I shared on YouTube, you can find it on my timeline, but in essence, um, it's a story about this man who got convicted just recently within the last, I don't know, month or so. I don't even know the date. That's how pissed off I am about this. He got convicted of murdering his girlfriend and her 10-year-old son. Um, the caption read, Tyrone whoever um, found guilty of murdering his girlfriend um, and and her son over what was being watched on television. So me being who I am and doing the things that I do, the the domestic violence work that I do, I was like, let me, let me, let me watch this real quick. Like, what is this about? So I watched the video, and leading up to the murder. She says to him, according to, and I don't know anything about this case, you guys. I have no, so I only know the information that was in this clip, but that's not why I'm here. I'm giving you the backstory for why I'm here. So she says to him something to the effect of, that's why your son committed suicide, was a little bitch and committed suicide because you're a little bitch. And then I don't know what happens. But things go from 90 to 10,000. He shoots her and then there's some 
disagreement between what happened with the son and whether the son walked into the bedroom while he was shooting the mom or if he went and tracked down the son but long story short he was committed he was he was convicted of premeditated murder because they say that he tracked um he tracked the child down right and so then there was evidence photo evidence where the child was actually hiding under his bed when the guy killed him What I shared in the post is why I'm so sad, mad about this is because we have choices. And I talk all the time about choices, your superpower, choices, your superpower. And it sounds all fluffy and it sounds all fun and it sounds all nice. But factually, choices are your superpower. You change the trajectory of your life by the choices that you make in any given moment. And this didn't have to happen. Now we have um a mom dead a son dead and a man headed probably to death row and it didn't have to happen it didn't have to happen and you know one of the things that we talk about um and that i train in at nine seconds is emotional management training emotion management training emt training right you can in a moment by the choices that you make either escalate de-escalate a situation now was the, was the tagline of the article clickbait probably so but it worked it got you to click on it and if, it, if you clicked on it and you don't think about it that's almost just as appalling so you can escalate or you can de-escalate a situation by your choices I call it um, stop think walk Right? That's that's in a nutshell how to de-escalate. Stop, think, walk. Stop what you're doing. Stop the conversation. Stop talking. Think about what you're about to say and then walk away regardless of what you're about to say. Whatever your point you were trying to make. It's not that serious in that moment. You have to de-escalate a situation or it can get completely out of hand and completely out of control. So when we talk about and that's really what I'm on here for. And that's why I felt like I felt compelled to come on right now in the moment when I am upset about it and passionate about it. And I'm probably yelling and I'm not going to apologize for that because maybe somebody needs somebody to yell them, shake them and say, listen, you have the power of choice to change your life. And every single choice you make directs how your life is going to go. And I'm going to tell you why I'm probably this passionate about escalation, de-escalation training, because I know for a fact in my own specific domestic situation, the day that I was assaulted, I did, I said something that ended up escalating it when I should have just kept quiet and tried to de-escalate it. Is there a guarantee that it still wouldn't have happened? No, but I can tell you for a fact that in hindsight, when I look back to what I said and the circumstances of the situation, I certainly escalated the situation by what I said. And I'm going to be real honest with you because I believe in complete transparency. I'm not going to ask you to be honest with me if you're not honest with, if I'm not going to be honest with you. So what happened was we were in the car, we were arguing and it registers to me if he, like he, his, 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 his voice, his tone, his everything is going up and up and up and up and up and up. He's calling me all kind of bitches, all kind of whores, all kind of gutter bitch, all kinds of, all kinds of everything but a child of God, right? But every other word out his mouth was bitch, 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 bitch. I said, oh, there's a bitch in this car, but it ain't me. Escalate, 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 escalate. That's what that, that's what that moment of, because up until that point, I hadn't said anything. I kept quiet. I wasn't arguing. I wasn't saying nothing back. He was talking himself into a progressive rage. And I let my ego get the best of me in that moment. And I said, oh yeah, you're right. There's a bitch in this car, but it ain't me. Meaning there's only two of us here. And if there's a bitch and it ain't me, then that must mean you, right? 
it escalated. I'm not saying that 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 it still wouldn't have happened, but I'm saying that when we're talking about domestic violence and we're talking about domestic violence prevention, we have to own our choices. Did I deserve for him to kick down my door and attack me? No. But did that one statement, was that one statement enough to have escalated it? We'll never know. We'll never know if it still would have happened or not because the, what we know about the end of the story is that I got assaulted. I was held hostage. I was beaten. That's what we know. But we, so we'll never know if the escalation or de-escalation would have worked. But I can guarantee you for sure, 1,000, it didn't help. Escalating it and arguing and calling him, saying he's the bitch, didn't help. Just like he escalated me by calling me a bitch, me telling him he's the bitch in the car, that escalated it for him. And if y'all don't like profanity, I'm sorry, this is not the video for you. The point is, one of the things that we teach is emotion management training emotion management technique training right you can de-escalate it doesn't necessarily guarantee that something bad still won't happen but it will decrease the chance and, and hopefully it will put some space between you and the circumstance and give it enough time to air out and chill out okay so I talked earlier, just a few minutes ago, I said, stop, think, walk. Stop what you're doing. Stop talking. Stop arguing. Think about the situation, who you're with, what they're pissed off about, what the possible repercussions are, and regardless of what conclusion you come to right there, walk away. Remove yourself from the situation, right? So when we talk about stop is pretty clear right? Think. Consider your audience. Who is this person? Who is this individual? How does this individual respond um, when they're angry? What is their, their, their level of progression from, from irritated to anger to outrage to violence? Do you know that about the person? Because if you don't know how somebody responds in, in moments of high stress, high emotion, you better find out because it makes a difference. I, I would have bet anything that my ex would not have taken it there. Despite the fact that his cousin had just three weeks prior um, stabbed his girlfriend, his pregnant girlfriend and murdered her. But I would have said, mm -mm, not my guy. Because I didn't know, I didn't know how he manages his emotions. We'd never really gotten, I mean, there were a few incidents up to that, but I should have known from the few instances that that was some information that I probably should pursue. So that's the main thing. Consider your audience. How, how do they progress from, from mad, from, from irritated to, to mad, to angry, to, to out, excuse me, to outrage, to violence? The other thing is understand how to read the room where am I? What's really going on here? What's happening here? How do I get away? Do I have exit options? What's my best course of action? Read the room, figure it out. In my situation, we were in a car when it was escalating. I was reading the room, although I had already escalated by that point, but I'm reading the room and I knew if I don't get out of this car, for sure, he's going to hit me. And so I had a strategy. I created a way. If I get to the house and I, I pull into my garage and I get out the car first and I can run in the house, I can lock the door. The part that I didn't figure in was for him to kick the door down, right? Read the room. Consider your audience. Who are they? How do they act? Read the room. What are my options? Um, and no matter what. Stop talking. Because here's the thing about an argument. When people are arguing, you're never, ever 
going to win a point. You can't win a point in the middle of an argument because in order for that person to argue with you, they have to be formulating their next response to you while you're still talking to them. It's not about getting their point across. It's about winning. It's about shutting you up and making them right. If, it, if you're going to live, isn't it okay for them to be right in that moment even if they were wrong? Now it's just not necessarily the time to point out their shortcomings, right? The other side of that, guys, is, is figuring out the walk away, right? So you walk away, you get out of immediate harm's way, then what do you do? Then what do you do? Stop, think, walk. Stop, think, walk. I've done that. Now what? Because I'm still in relation with this individual. Either you still live with them, you're still sleeping with them, you're still dating them, you're still talking to them, you're still communicating with them. If any of those things are happening, you need to figure out what's my long-term strategy. Do I have a way to effectively communicate with this person? Is it possible to effectively communicate with this person? I don't know about y'all, but I've dated some people that just refuse to communicate. That's their way of managing anger. They give you the silent treatment. Um, kind of toddler-like, but it's better than that. It's better than beating you. It's better than hitting you, fighting you, shooting you, driving, over, driving you over with the car. But you have to understand how to effectively communicate with the people that you're in relation with. And this goes for, you know, we talk a lot about because domestic violence is about intimate partners and things like that. But understand that domestic violence refers to your domicile. It refers to sexual engagement and it refers to domicile. So if you live with them. So it can be a situation where it's a parent child, you know, adult children. Um, it, it looks at familial relationships and all that when it's deciding is this domestic violence? Does this fall under that umbrella? But regardless of if it follows, falls under domestic violence or not, violence is violence, abuse is abuse. We don't need to categorize it. I don't need to put, a, put it in a column and put a check mark by it. The other thing is, guys, figuring out ahead of time. And this, this is what I'm talking about. This is the prevention piece. So the stop, think, walk, that's in the middle of it. We're now talking about prevention, learning how to communicate, learning how to set boundaries. For the longest time, I could I could spell boundary, but I didn't really know what it meant. And I certainly did not know how to, to instill them in my life and to put them into practice in my relationships. I was very subservient. I was very, um, if you like me, I like you, whatever you need me to do, whoever you need me to become. I was that girl. That's who I was. And you can't be that and not have boundaries, right? You have to be able to have boundaries. Those are there to protect you, just like your instincts are there to protect you. Your gut, your intuition is there to protect you. But at the end of the day, like I said in my post, um, in the, the house is burning down isn't the time to find out if the water works. If, if it's already up in flames, now is not the time to ask. You should probably make sure that you know that the water works before the house catches on fire, before the stove catches on fire, whatever. Once the flames are ignited, you're automatically in a chase mode. You're trying to resolve something that's already happened. Prevention is so much easier than recovery. I don't know if you picked up on that. Prevention is easier than recovery. It's easier to get training to learn how to prevent a situation from happening than it is to be in the situation and then have to try and figure out how do I recover mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually from it. 
And if you're one of those people who ends up being killed as a result, recovery is not an option. It's not an option. So that, you know, when, when, when I was doing, creating the nonprofit, that's why we settled in on prevention. We want you to know ahead of time how to ward off some of this stuff from happening. And if you're somebody who's already been in an abusive situation or you're already in relation with an abuser, understanding strategies that you can use to get out of the situation and to, in this case, in these cases, de-escalate it um, as much as possible. You can't, I'm not saying you can prevent everything. I'm not saying that it's at this point, but you can do a lot of things to keep it from prevent, to prevent it from happening to you. You can do a lot of things to prevent it from getting worse. You can do a lot of things to prevent you from being in that circumstance to begin with. That's what, that's what this is about. And that's why I was, I was sad, mad. I was mad, sad. I was all of those things because it came down to choices. You know, I only know the little bit from, I don't know, it was like a two minute news clip. But I could put myself in that room and I could be him for a second. You know, we talk about who the victims are, but we also talk about times of stress, times of emotional angst and anxiety, depression, addiction. You know, we talk about all these things. And for a second, at first I was just, I was mad about the fact that he killed her. Then when I saw mm -hmm. what she said, I was like, that was an escalation for sure. That was just like me. It's only this bitch in the car, but it ain't me. I put myself in his shoes for a second. If my child had just committed suicide recently and somebody said that to me, that my kid committed suicide because they're a bitch and I'm a bitch, that would escalate me. For sure it would escalate me. I don't have it in me to kill somebody, but so that would have never happened. But my point is, she made a choice to say what she said. I can imagine that escalated the situation. Certainly didn't de-escalate it. He gets a gun. That escalates. He shoots her. That escalates it further. Now I got to kill the kid because the kid saw. There's another escalation. And so you see how one escalation builds on the other, on the other, on the other, on the other. And that's why it's important to talk about the um, emotional, you know, managing emotions and, and what kind of emotional management techniques can you employ. You have to have those in your arsenal. Those things have to be in your toolbox. They've got to be in your toolbox before you ever find yourself in a situation like that because instinctively you're going to go to your 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 normal response. You know, we talk in Challenge to Change, my book about generational systems. We talk about that, having that emotional go-to. Like this is how I automatically respond. And you have to you have to reconstruct and redirect that automatic response to be something other than violence if you have a natural tendency to violence. So understanding those emotional things and understanding triggers, you know, I'm working on a book now called Untriggered. You have to understand all of these things and how all of these little pieces all fit together. And pretty soon you get enough pieces of different explosive materials and all of a sudden, boom, you have a murder. Boom, you have domestic violence. But it doesn't have to happen. Every single one of those points were choices. They were choices. So when you hear me say that, you know, choice is your superpower, 
It really is. If, if the choice when whatever was going on that prompted her to say what she said, there was a choice there, then there was a choice for her to make. Stop, think, walk. It stops there. He gets the gun. Stop, think, walk. There's a choice. There's an escalation. First shot. Stop, think, walk. Choice. Pull the trigger again. Stop, think, walk. Escalate. So you can see this is a buildup. It is a buildup of emotion, anger, frustration, pain, all those things were dumped into this cocktail that resulted in what it resulted in. And so now two people are, are dead. One is, is, has been convicted of capital murder. Two, two counts, of, I think it's one count of capital murder, one count, I don't know, watch the video, but one person is for sure going to prison for the rest of their life at best, at worst, looking at the death penalty. Two other people have already died and now you've got two families and everybody who's associated and connected with all three of those individuals being completely devastated because of choices, because of emotion, mismanaging emotions, because of making bad choices. That's why we teach the things that we teach. That's why we teach emotion, emotion management techniques. That's why we teach escalation versus de-escalation. That's why we teach boundaries. That's why we teach relationship red flags. These are all components of abuse and violence all components of it and you know we just just coming out of my my training this week and we were talking about how you know even as entrepreneurs you need all these different things to run a successful and thriving business you need all of these things you need all these tools in your arsenal to prevent domestic violence but my takeaway for you guys today if you're watching this video is you have a choice you have a superpower of choice in every single given second of the day. Do this, go this route. Do that, go that right route. How you choose and the choices you make will decide the results that you get. And your takeaway is if, you, if you're in a situation and you, you have a choice to either say something back that's probably going to escalate or to stop, think, and walk to de-escalate, choose your stop, think, walk option. If you don't remember anything else, just remember stop, think, walk equals de-escalate. Stop, think, walk equals de-escalate. You can figure out the rest later. But in the moment, in the choice, in that, in that split second, and that's why I decided to come on here right, right, right when it was, it was here for me. Because me sharing Stop, Think, Walk right now, somebody may see this video at some point in the future and then be faced with a choice to either escalate a situation or de-escalate a situation. And they're going to remember Stop, Think, Walk. That lady was yelling on that video about stop, think, walk equals de-escalate. They may not remember nothing else I say. And I don't care if y'all remember nothing else I say. Stop, think, walk equals de-escalate. Get tools in your toolbox, guys. If you, if you need information, if you want to schedule training, you want to do a consultation, you want to book training for your organization about emotion, emotion management techniques, let me know. I want to prevent 
bad stuff from happening. I don't want to have to come on with a reactionary video. We want to be proactive. We want prevention, not recovery. All right. So that's it, guys. That's my message. Um, yeah. Stop. Think. Walk. Equals de-escalate. You have a superpower of choice. Choose wisely. Choose de-escalation. Because there's no guarantees mm -hmm. once it escalates where it's going. And I know that firsthand. And I had to learn it the hard way. So like I tell my kids all the time, don't take the class, learn my lesson. All right. So be well, be blessed as always, guys, until we're back here live again, stay safe and we'll see you soon.